If you've wanted a Vauxhall SUV, up to now there's only been the Mokka X. But now you'll be delighted to hear there are two new Vauxhall SUVs. This is the smallest, the Crossland X, and there's a larger one called the Grandland X, but that's more of a Nissan Qashqai rival. Now, silly names aside, both of them push Vauxhall back into the SUV game. The Crossland X sits below the Mocha X in Vauxhall's new SUV lineup and replaces the old Mariva MPV. It sits on a modified version of a Peugeot 2008 platform and uses similar engines and gearboxes. But on the outside, you wouldn't really know there's a French cousin because with its large grille and distinctive roof design, it's clearly a modern Vauxhall. Inside, and the Crossland X adopts Vauxhall's new style of dashboard, which we first saw on the Astra. So there's a very clear design, with the main focus being on the infotainment system, which is neat, very easy to use, and screen resolution is very good indeed. Now, quality-wise in here, it's okay. There are some nice soft-touch plastics across the top of the dashboard and across the tops of the doors, but elsewhere, if you look hard enough, there are some scratchy plastics down here and this glove box is really quite cheap and nasty. Talking about the glove box, in actual fact, it's not as large as I would hope it to be. It does fit a large packet of crisps, but this car really does betray its French partnership because the fuse box is in the glove box, much like you find in a Peugeot 2008. So it means the glove box isn't as large as it could be. Now the door bins do just about pass the car by a big bottle test. There we go. Down here we've got a couple of cup holders. There's a little roller blind here for some extra storage. And down here there's a place to put your mobile phone and there's a couple of charging ports as well. Now overall the Crossland X is very well equipped. One particular highlight is the fact that all models come with the Vauxhall's OnStar system. Now if I press this button up here I'm connected to a call centre in Luton and it acts as my personal concierge service as well. OnStar also gives you a Wi-Fi hotspot in the car as well which is great for families on long holidays. Basic equipment on the Crossland X is pretty good, so there's OnStar, an infotainment system with Apple CarPlay, climate control, cruise control and 16-inch alloys. This range-topping Elite Nav gets a contrasting roof, sat-nav and larger wheels. Now you'll have noticed on the outside the Crossland X is quite boxy for a small SUV and that pays real dividends back here because there's a lot of space. Now if I sit upright, look at the amount of headroom I've got. That is vast for a small SUV and knee room is pretty good too. I'm just over 5 foot 10 and I've got lots of space for my knees. Now you can fit three people just about back here. If I slot into the middle seat there's a good amount of shoulder room and headroom is pretty good too. Now, bad points, well, the door bins are particularly small and these doors don't open particularly wide for a family car. Look, you're gonna really struggle to load those child seats in here, that's for sure. Now, one thing I would recommend going for is the versatility pack. Now, it costs 300 pounds and it brings with it sliding and folding rear seats. So the seat bases can slide forwards for more boot room or they can slide backwards for more knee room. The backrests also fold backwards and forwards to give yourself more comfort. There's also an armrest because the standard car doesn't get an armrest and it also comes with a ski hatch and because it only costs 300 pounds it's something that's really worth investing in. It's round to the boot where the Crossland X really does pull ahead of its rivals because the amount of space you've got on offer is far greater than you find in a Nissan Duke, a Peugeot 2008 and a Renault Capture. Now you can see that the amount of space you've got is really good, it's nice and square, it's nice and wide as well and if I grab the car by a suitcase you can see that there's a good amount of space for a car of this size, you could probably fit two of those side by side. Let, let me just take that out for a moment. Now on mid-level cars and above you get a movable boot floor. Now when it's in its highest position you get some useful underfloor storage and you can of course make the space larger with the folding rear seats. And when that boot floor is in its highest position and you fold it down the rear seats, you get an almost flat loading area.
Under the bonnet there's a couple of 1.6 diesels but really it's the petrols that best suit the car. There's a wheezy 79 bhp 1.2 which we'd avoid and instead you should be looking at the 108 bhp and 128 bhp 1.2 litre 3 cylinder turbos. Just like the Peugeot 2008 though there are no four wheel drive versions. We've got the 1.2 three cylinder turbocharged petrol engine here with 128 brake horsepower. And it's a pretty good engine, it's very revvy. It makes the typical three cylinder thrum, which I find quite endearing. And there's plenty of punch, plenty of go, plenty of enthusiasm, which is great. It's matched up with a very slick six speed gearbox that really slots home the gears and overall, it's quite a pleasant car to drive. The steering is very accurate. It's very quick, which could take you a little bit by surprise, but it's very quick, very accurate. The throttle and the brake and the clutch have all got a nice weighting to them. And overall, it's a very pleasant car to drive. It's the Crossland X. Pleasant enough is the best way to describe the Crossland X. It's not particularly engaging to drive, nor does it do anything differently from its rivals, but it's genuinely more than adequate. I could say the ride is a bit inconsistent and lumpy around town, despite it having a raised ride height, but there are a couple of other things that grate more. It's very easy to get comfortable at the wheel. Now this particular car, we've got an armrest, which makes me feel as though I'm in a Range Rover. There's plenty of adjustments in the steering wheel and in the seat, and you could find yourself very happily cruising for hours on the motorway in the Crossland X. However, there are a couple of problems to that. Firstly is wind noise and cabin noise. Now, you're driving along the motorway, there is a huge amount of noise in here. I'm not talking about the engine, but the wind noise. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is pretty loud in here. That would get on your nerves after a while. And another thing that winds me up is the handbrake lever. Now, it's the button that's on the top. It would drive you mad after a while because the button is just not where you expect it to be. It may be a small little niggle, but it's little niggles that will get on your nerve very quickly. Lastly, it's the looks. Now, styling is always subjective, but I can't help but think the Crossland X looks like an MPV with a raised ride height. It doesn't look like a proper SUV like a Renault Capture does. But overall, it's better than the old Vauxhall Mariva. It offers a spacious interior and it has a great infotainment system, which will impress many family buyers. If you like this review, share it and press the thumbs up icon. You can watch a review of the Renault Capture at the top and our SUVs playlist. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel by pressing the Carbuyer logo.